modern balloons are mostly made for fun, but they still start with the same basic ingredient. Natural rubber produced by trees like these. The aptly named rubber tree produces milky latex, which is packed with rubber particles. When the bark is cut, the latex drips into a collection cup. Each tree oozes 50 balloons worth of latex per day. To undergo the transformation into balloons, the latex comes to Belval in Chev, Poland. They make 1.6 million balloons a day. On arrival, it's pumped into these 20,000 litre tanks. But in its natural state, the latex isn't stretchy enough to make balloons. Belbal's CEO, Bart van Nuffel, explains why. It contains rubber molecules, but you can't actually make a balloon from it. If you would dry it, all you would get is like a, a sticky, bouncy ball. But there is no elasticity in it yet. A rubber balloon has to be able to withstand being blown up to an astonishing 150 times its original volume. For safe inflating, and to stop yourself looking silly, balloon makers always recommend using a pump. To get stretch in their latex, chemistry guru Anna turns to a secret chemical formula. We prefer latex for balloons, but it's a secret what we add in. In the silos, the secret solution creates bridge-like links between the rubber molecules. So when the balloon is inflated, they stretch apart, but stay connected. The mix brews in these tanks for four weeks before it can hit the production line. But when it comes out, it's a bit lumpy for making thin-skinned balloons. So latex operator David Jaworski strains the liquid through fabric. But milky white balloons won't get a party started. So to add a splash of colour, these guys have cooked up 130 colour recipes. First, David measures out dyes in precise ratios and mixes them into a thousand litre batch of latex. That's enough for 170,000 balloons. Today's colour is a fetching piglet pink. The dye is the final ingredient in the mix, but if you tried to make balloons with it in this state, they would fall apart. Air bubbles would create weak spots in the stretchy fabric. To get rid of them, the mixture's left to settle for 10 hours. When it's ready, the liquid flows through a rainbow of pipes to the production line. Obviously, no one's going to get very far trying to inflate this colourful soup. To whip it into shape, it goes onto balloon-shaped moulds called forms. But the trouble with latex is, it's sticky stuff and could easily get stuck to the plastic forms. So first, they're dipped in chemicals that will make the latex stick to itself and not the mould. Belbal's COO Mario Remberg uses his finger to demonstrate. You can clearly see that there's already a reaction and I can take out the latex easily from my hand. And this is exactly this what we will achieve with our latex. The latex tank rises to immerse the forms. And hey presto, perky pink balloons emerge like magic without a single drip. They now look like balloons. But if you tried inflating these, you'd end up blowing a raspberry. Any balloon blower needs something to hold on to, or all that air will escape. So rows of rotating brushes roll the balloon necks into a rounded ring. Even after all this clever stuff, these balloons still aren't strong enough to stand the strain of inflation. To toughen the rubber, they're baked in a 40-meter oven at an average temperature of 70 degrees. When they come out, a nimble-fingered team strip the balloons off the racks. And they don't hang about. Each of them strips up to 100 balloons a minute. 
but the bait balloons are, undeniably, a little bit dull. To perk them up, they go into a kind of latex laundromat. These giant dryers are stuffed with 5,000 balloons at a time. Inside, a cloth buffs the rubber to a shiny finish. And that's that. 